Hey guys, let's go over changing a flat on your 600X. Please note, we recommend that any repairs that are done on your bike be done by a professional mechanic. If you choose to follow this video and repair the bike yourself, we suggest taking it down to your local bike shop for a safety check afterwards. First, let's talk about the tools you need for this. For the version of the bike with the tool-free through axle in the rear, all you need is a tire lever and a pump. Some 600Xs have tool-free quick releases, and some have bolt-on style through axle. If you have a bolt-on style, skip to the time code below. Let's start by flipping the bike over. The first thing you do is open the quick release lever on the through axle, and it aligns with a cutout in the body of the through axle here that you can use for leverage to unthread it. <clears throat> so turn it counterclockwise to unthread, And at a certain point, it'll just spin free and you'll feel the wheel kind of drop loose. So just remove that through axle all the way and set it aside and lift the wheel out of the bike. If the tire hasn't gone completely flat just yet, you're going to want to remove the rest of the air to make it easier to remove the wheel from the rim. So remove the valve cap and depress the valve tip. I like to add a little pressure with my hands just to make sure we're forcing all the air out. Okay. So now with a nice deflated tire, the really important trick we're gonna do here and the kind of tricky part is called unseating the bead. So this being a tubeless ready tire, the bead sits really firmly in the rim. So I'm just gonna pick a point that's not right at the valve in fact, I'm going to go opposite the valve right now. And I'm going to take both of my thumbs together, grab the whole tire, and push against the rim on the opposite side. So just to push the bead of the tire off of the ridge right here that it sits on. That takes some force, so just keep that in mind. Then you want to just go around the tire, unseating the bead the whole way. And you want to do this on both sides. So now we've got a tire that's much, sitting much more loosely on the rim. Uh, before we're ready to remove the tire though too, just want to unthread this locking nut that holds the valve in place. go. Now, with your tire lever, you want to find that bead again. And I do this by rolling the tire back to expose the bead so I can hook it with the tire lever and pry it over the outside of the rim. And now, you get to hold the tire with one hand and pull the tire lever with the other hand to pull the bead over the rim all the way around on one side. And now we shouldn't need the tire lever for the other side. You can just pull it right off. So now remove the tire, remove the tube, set the wheel aside. Separate the tube from the tire. So now you wanna go through and thoroughly check your inner tube for the puncture site and check the tire for any debris stuck in it. A good trick here is to fill your inner tube up and to feel where the air is coming out because then you can pinpoint exactly where the puncture is. And if it's on the outside of the inner tube, that means you probably have something stuck in your tire or something that penetrated the outside of your tire. So you want to go through and thoroughly check both the outside and the inside of your tire for any debris. If there's a puncture on the underside of the tube, that means you probably got what's called a pinch flat where Maybe there wasn't quite enough air in the tire for the, the terrain you were riding and the rim bottomed out uh, and pinched the tube. So you might want to consider uh, how much air you're putting into your tires or maybe you just hit the wrong rock on the trail. When you have your new inner tube and uh, you're ready to install it, you want to put just enough air in it so it takes the shape of the tire kind of like this one is right now. Take your inner tube and then just feed it back into the tire You want to align the valve 
with the logo on the tire, because that's cool. And now take a look at the direction of the tread on the tire. So if you look at the treads, they kind of make a V shape pointing towards the front of the bike. So you want to align that with the orientation of your wheel. So since this is the drive side, that's on the right side of the bike. So this is the front of the bike. So this is the correct way to orient the tire. Put the valve through. And now make sure that uh, the bead of the tire is starting to get into the channel of the rim. So you just want to feed that in with your fingers. So I'm just using my, basically using my fingers to just push this bead over the edge of the rim, back into the channel in the rim. And we wanna do one side and then the other side. So now that I've done one side, I'm just gonna go through and kind of push the tire into the channel of the rim as well. Or sorry, put, let me say that again. So now that I've done one bead, I'm gonna go through and push the inner tube so that it's also sitting in the channel of the rim because we don't want the inner tube to be caught in between the second bead and the rim when we're reinstalling it. So I'm just kind of pushing that inner tube up into the tire onto the rim. So now it looks like this with the tube sitting inside and one bead of the tire left to go. So now I'm gonna start doing this side, give the valve a little push up so we know that the bead is uh, sitting underneath the tube and not on top of it. And now I'm just gonna start pushing that bead over. So this is where it starts to get a little bit harder. So you start to uh, use both hands to push the bead over the edge and you'll find that it starts to get tight once you get to the last part. And uh, this is gonna take two hands for sure. So it's starting to get tight here. So what I'm gonna do is just go back and kind of pinch the bead of the tire into the center of the rim where the tire can be the loosest. So I'm gonna do this on both sides. Just pinch that bead over and you'll find that the top of the bead will progressively get looser until you can just pop it right over with both thumbs. And now let's air this up. So. Just want to reinstall that uh, locking nut on the valve and open up the valve. Grab your pump. And use the Presta side to install onto the valve and lock in place. So what's a good pressure for these tires? Well, depends where you're riding. I find that if, we're, if you're riding mostly road and flat gravel, probably gonna run somewhere around 30, 25 to 30 PSI, somewhere on the higher side. Uh, if you're gonna be running, riding more trail stuff, a little bit rougher stuff, you wanna run lower pressure to get more grip. So somewhere closer to 20, maybe even under 20 in some conditions. Um, but then again, the lower you go, the more risk there is of getting a pinch flat. So you kinda wanna be mindful of that. It's a pretty high volume tire, so it's gonna take a lot of pumping. With this tire and rim combination, you have to pump it until the bead seats. And uh, you'll actually hear it pop into place. And that way you know that the tire is evenly seated all the way around the rim. You might actually have to overinflate the tire to what you're actually ultimately going to be running and then let some air out. There it goes. There we go. So now it's a little overinflated, so I'm gonna let some air back out. All right, now we're right around, right around where we wanna be. Let 
Okay, now we're ready to reinstall the wheel. So first you wanna get your belt oriented. So I like to loop it kinda of over the pedal, get it onto the rear wheel, hold it onto the cog, and loop it onto the front sprocket. Now we're going to aim the rotor right into the caliper back here. Just let it drop into place. Now we can reinstall the rear through axle. Um, as you're installing the through axle, you just want to look into the side and make sure that the through axle is aligning with the threads on the drive side. And as you turn it, you can see that it's threading in. You shouldn't have to adjust belt tension uh, if your belt tension has already been adjusted with the wheel on the bike. So just get it nice and snug. Close the quick release and get back to riding. If your 600X comes with a rear bolt-on style through axle, then you're gonna start by grabbing a six millimeter Allen key. Now insert your Allen key into the through axle. Turn it counterclockwise to unthread the through axle. Now just keep spinning it until it spins freely and then you're safe to remove it. Uh, now, with the wheel just sitting in the dropouts, you can lift it, remove the belts, and get the wheel out of the way. Now, to reinstall your wheel, now grab your through axle, and I have my six mil ready to go. Slide it back into place, and now you just kind of want to align the threads on the through axle with the threads in the dropout as you're tightening it. And you'll feel them catch, and then you just tighten that up, nice and snug. Now you're ready to ride. If you get a front flat or you need to remove your front wheel for any reason, just flip open the quick release lever on the through axle. You wanna hold the nutted side on the opposite side and just turn this counterclockwise until it starts to spin freely and you can remove the nut on the opposite side and then just slide that through axle out Pop your wheel out. To reinstall, keep an eye on the rotor and just center that right into the caliper between the brake pads and then just drop the axle right back into place in the dropouts. And just go ahead and slide that through axle back in. You can kind of wiggle the wheel around to help guide it through. Put the nut on the opposite side. I like to thread this in as much as I can by hand before finishing it off on the quick release lever side. You don't wanna tighten this all the way because it'll be impossible to close. So I like to back it off a little bit and just unthread it a turn or so, so that it takes some effort to close it. Enough so that it leaves an imprint in the palm of your hand. With high volume tires like this, tire pressure choice is really going to affect the feel of the bike and the performance of the bike. If you're riding on more smooth terrain, you're gonna to wanna to run a higher PSI because you won't need quite as high grip and you'll probably want less rolling resistance. So if you're riding on mostly roads or dirt, you're going to run maybe 25, even 30 PSI in some instances. Uh, actually, there are calculators online to help you determine what the ideal pressure for your weight and given tire width is. Um, so reach out to us if you have questions about that. If you have any more questions about changing a flat on this bike or doing any other adjustments, feel free to reach out. Our contact information is on your screen.